These notes are over the difference between el pretérito and el imperfecto. These are two different ways of speaking in the past in Spanish. Las dos versiones del pasado en español. Here's an easy way to dis determine which one you use in which situations. El pretérito is more specific. It's more precise. Associate the P in pretérito with precise. You're expressing a completed action that began and ended at a specific time in the past. It has a definite beginning and end. These are important notes that you should copy down. This will kind of be your proof that you watched the video as well. Um, also copy down these useful key phrases that will help you determine um, whether or not to use the preterite or imperfect. All of these phrases that we're going to see have to do with a specific point in time. For example, anoche last night. You may want to write down what these phrases mean as well because you'll see them throughout the book. Anoche, last night, is very specific. We know when it, last night was. It's when it started and when it stopped. Ayer, yesterday, was ve it's very specific. We know it's completed. Yesterday is over. El año pasado, last year, that's a specific period of time in the past. We know that last year is over. It's completed. It had a definite beginning and end. La semana pasada. Last week. Una vez. One time. So notice that all of these phrases, what they have in common is they give a very specific point in time. They're not general, they're specific. Last night, yesterday, last year, last week, one time. These are things that you could put on a calendar, on a specific day or a specific year, uh, and that's why we associate el pretérito with precision. It's specific. On the other hand, you have el imperfecto which is just what it sounds like. It's imperfect. It's, it's not as precise. It's more general. So copy down these uses. The imperfecto is used to express a repeated action or something that happens on a regular basis or things that are habitual. A lot of times you use the imperfecto to talk about things that you used to do on a regular basis. Or you'll use the imperfecto to describe what something looked like or what something uh, to describe something in the past. The imperfecto is more general. There isn't usually a specific beginning or end. It's more of a cloud of time. It's a, a not very specific period of time. And here are some more uh, key phrases to help you identify sentences in which you use the imperfect. Siempre, always, very general. We're not saying yesterday or last night. We're saying always. You always did something, and that's very general. It's repetitive. It, it happened frequently. A menudo means kind of every so often or, or frequently. Again, that's repetitive, habitual. It's not a specific point in time. De vez en cuando means every once in a while or sometime, you know, every so often. Uh, again, repetitive, habitual. Cada día, each day or every day. We're not, we're not talking about one day in particular. We're talking about several days in the past, which makes it very general. Cada semana, every week or each week. Todos los días, every day or all the days. So these all, all these have in common that they are repetitive habitual actions that are more general. 
which is the opposite of the preterite, which is more precise. This, if it's confusing to you now, this might help clarify. If you think of this visually, we have el presente, the very first verb tense we learned in Spanish. O as a amos ais an. Um, specific point in time here, right in the middle, that is present tense. Further on the line is the future, and further backwards is the past. So if we look at what we're talking about on this timeline, yo como el pollo ahora, now. So this word gives you a clue that it's happening in the present tense, and you can tell by the way the verb is conjugated that it's in the present tense. Here's the preterito, in the past, specific point on this timeline. And our example sentence says, Anoche yo comí el pollo. Last night I ate the chicken. We know that it was last night. It's a specific spot on this timeline. But then it gets tricky when we want to talk about something that we always did. Siempre comía el pollo. Siempre meaning always. Now it's not one point on the timeline, it's more like several points on the timeline. Or we don't, we don't really know when this is stopping and starting, it's just always. So that's why we can visualize the imperfecto as kind of a cloud, or an imperfect, non-precise period of time. So it would probably be a good idea to pause the video and copy down this um, visual as well. And then you can move on and try some of the, uh, the problems on the next slide. So here you have, ¿Entiendes la lección? Do you understand the lesson? Here are the endings for the preterite verbs, e, hasta, o, etc. And the endings for the imperfecto. Read, pause the video and, and read these sentences and determine, using the notes that you've taken so far, where the words are in these sentences that can tell you whether or not you're going to conjugate this verb for in the preterite or in the imperfecto. And once you've paused the video and finished, you've completed the notes for tonight, and you can show, uh, show the notes in class tomorrow for credit.